Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another episode of Create with Kendra, a place where you can be inspired, challenged, and changed. I am super excited. Welcome to episode 101. Um, we are here again. Did I mention that this is my favorite place to be? For those that are interested in sending in topics of discussion or questions to the show, please feel free. This is your home, just like it's my home. Okay. Every single week you have an opportunity to submit a question or topic of discussion through the Ask Kendra function on www.unassociated.com slash Ask Kendra. I'm so happy to receive any questions. I'm super excited to engage with you all on what you're thinking about, what you're curious about concerning your faith, concerning um, living practically in Jesus name. All right. Um, Speaking of Ask Kendra, this week's episode is inspired and has been drawn from the Ask Kendra pool. Um, And I'm going to read the question and we're going to get into this. Um, I can't wait to get into this conversation. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Now the question reads, my question is, have you ever gotten so down that you almost gave up? Let's talk about it. To anyone that feels like giving up, to anyone that feels like they're, they are so hard on themselves concerning your Christian faith, your Christian walk, this episode is for you. Before we get any further, I want to pray. Because this is a real, a real, like for me, it's a sensitive conversation. People deal with struggling in their faith every single day. And some folks don't have an outlet to, to express it. Some people don't have community to talk it through. And so they just throw in the towel. Um, But today my prayer is that this is your sign not to give up. Even though you are at the edge, you are at the end of your rope. I pray that this is your sign not to give up on God. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to engage in conversation. God, I pray a decrease in me and that your Holy Spirit speaks. God, I pray that you touch the hearts in the minds of your children that are struggling with this. And even if it's not them, they know a person, a family member that is struggling with holding on to their faith. God, I pray that the testimonies encourage someone to hang on. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. All right. Um, First things first, God loves you. He does. And I want to remind you that God is so crazy about you as his son. He is so crazy about you as his daughter. He loves you so much. And a part of his love, his hope for us as his children is that we hold on to him. That we hold on to him. Um, Isaiah 54 and 10 from the NIV version says, though the mountains may be shaken and the hills be removed, yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken, nor my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord who has compassion on you. God's desire is to be in relationship with his children, no matter how messed up we are. He's the one that can fix us. He's the one that can bring us together, make us whole. So I just want to remind someone out there that regardless of your condition, regardless regardless of where you are in your faith, God desires you. He loves you. He wants nothing but the best for you. Now, um... 
it, 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 I, I, I ask myself, what are some things that gets us discouraged when it comes to faith? And I thought of the pain that we go through, the discomfort that we go through and disappointment. Okay. We're going to talk about those things, pain, discomfort, and disappointment. I myself have dealt with those things. And um, today on this episode, I want to share with you a time in my life where I almost gave up. Yeah. Maybe not everyone can attest to almost giving up saying, God, is this really worth me living for? But I've been there. And I don't want anyone to feel shame that you are there. I want this to be an opportunity to say, hey, these, this is what I'm feeling. But God has something greater. He does. So I want to tell you a story of a time in my life where I almost gave up. From the age of nine, nine years old to 17 years old, I was a member of a church, a particular church. Um, I received Christ at nine years old, as I shared with you all on past episodes, received the gift of the Holy Spirit. You know, my, my, my training in ministry really developed at this church. Um, singing, um, preaching, speaking, whatever it was like, I was cultivated in this particular ministry. Like I, I grew up there. I grew up there and this place was home for me. This place was safety for me. I, I promise you, like when I was younger, I was such a square. Like I would rather go to church than go to like a football game. I was so dedicated to ministry. I was so dedicated to seeking the Holy Ghost. I was so dedicated to God. Like this was a huge part of my life. It was. The church was a huge part of my life. It seemed like a very healthy and progressive space to develop and to grow until the covers were pulled back. Yeah. It had been revealed that my leader, my pastor, was engaging in things, let's just say he should not have been engaging in doing things that a a pastor should not be doing. I'm just going to leave it there because it's not about pointing the finger. It's about <clears throat> giving my testimony. So as a result of the covers being pulled back and the exposure of some inappropriate behavior, <clears throat> the church split. I mean, when I say split, gosh, I think of a wishbone in the in the turkey, right? You have like a wishbone. I don't really know how to show you, but when you have a wishbone, it's it's a bone that that connects kind of like this. If you are watching me on YouTube, you can see how my hands are gathered, uh, my fingers are gathered. And um, when I was younger, my dad used to always pull the wishbone. We would always, you know, try to break it. Whoever gets the biggest piece of the wishbone gets, you know, the wish. That's just how it worked. And so I really feel like that is how the church split. It was a pulling, but it was somebody got the bigger piece. Somebody got away with. With things, with with infamous acts. Someone got away with most of the members that followed this particular uh, pastor to another church. And the way that I found out the church split, there had been some like discomfort around the church. But I, 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 I didn't know, like literally when I say I was oblivious to the issues that was going on, I really was. <laughs> 
I just noticed that a um, few people weren't coming. Um, in particular, uh, some higher ups weren't coming to the church because they weren't standing for foolishness, which I totally get and understand. But I found out that the church split the day that it split. I came to church one day and it was less than full. It was quiet. Something was up. Something was wrong. And most of the members were gone. Most of the members were gone. And it wasn't like a service. It was kind of like a meeting on a Sunday morning. And it was then that I found out about the split. And I just started to weep and weep. Because it was such a shock. It was so unexpected. It was something that I never thought that would happen to us. Because this is the place that I love. This is the place that grew me. I learned so much from it. Right? My identity was in this particular church for so many years, the childhood, my teen years into young adulthood. And I'm just like, what? I promise you, I think we, me and my, um, my mom, we were going to this church, um, after the split, I think we went for about a month, you know, just kept going back for about a month because we've been there for so many years. And every single time I would walk into the church, I would just weep. I would just cry and feel so much pain. Feel so much discomfort. Feel so much disappointment. And I could not believe that this was... The outcome, I couldn't believe it was happening to us. And I questioned my life. I questioned my salvation. I questioned the things that I did in and through and for the church. I questioned, like, was it all a lie? Was it all fake? Like, God, I, I didn't know that this was what it was. I didn't mean to do this if it, if I had anything to do with it. Like, it was just so much questioning like am I supposed to even be Christian because it hurt so bad because I was so disappointed I remember during that season I was crying one night and The Lord spoke to me. He did, and I'm glad he did. And he said, your identity wasn't in the church organization. Your identity is in me. And he knew right where I was with my faith. That I was questioning it. That I thought about giving up. It reminded me that my identity and the things that I did different did for God, like I, I was so sincere with my walk with God and trying to please him and live saved as a kid, as a teenager. I thought it was in vain. I really, really did. I thought it was in vain. But God reassured me and, and, and told me those things that you were doing for me, those are for me. Yes, you did it in this particular place during this season of your life and yes I allowed you to go through it and to see it and then I didn't know why like God why why would you do that why would you do that but God was maturing me for this moment This is the first time I've ever shared this story on a large platform because it's it's still a little hush hush. It is. But 
the things that we do for Christ, no matter how hard it gets, I want to encourage someone to hold on to God's unchanging hand. He's never changing. Regardless of how people do you, how life does you, how situations turn out, not the best or not expected as, as we think, God remains faithful. And that's what I had to learn during that season was that this is messed up. I feel like giving up, but God is still faithful. I want to read from the English Standard Version, Matthew 11 and 28. And it reads, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. And I also want to read John chapter 16, verse 33. John chapter 16 and verse 33, and it says, I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. In this, in Matthew chapter 11, it's a... It's an appeal to us that are weak, those that are struggling, those that are heavy and burdened with the cares of this life. He said, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. We can go to God for rest. We can go to God for strength and restoration. We can go to him. And in John chapter 16, he tells us in the scripture, the world will have tribulation. It will. But in him, you'll find peace. Because he has overcome the world. What a champion that our God has overcome the world. What a champion. That we can face tribulation, we can go through tumultuous episodes in our lives, and God says, oh, even though all of this is going on, you can rest in me. I have peace to give to you because I've overcome the world. That's a God move right there. And when we're so weak and we are so burdened and heavy laden, We don't have to be the superhero. We don't have to have the answer to why this happened. We have the opportunity to just rest in the Lord. Hallelujah. We have the opportunity just to rest in the Lord. And I want to... Encourage someone today. If you are struggling with your faith, let me tell you this. We're going to have troubles in this world. But are you going to go through the troubles of life with God or without God? Because God is everything. And without him, we can do Nothing. Just because it's hard does not mean you have you have to know all of the all of the, the the solutions and answers to everything. You can go to God and rest in His peace. <clears throat> Amen. Um, before we close, I want to pray out for for faith. For struggling faith, for having questions about your faith, and and trying to <clears throat> go to other things and sources for peace and for love and 
I, I, I tell you, there is not a crystal. There is not a bundle of sage. Glory to God. This is, this is what God is saying right now. There is no crystal. There is no bundle of sage. There is no, no, no psychic, no medium, no tarot card. There's no other religion, no other God that can satisfy your soul like God can. There is no other place to find peace. There is a temporary carbon copy of what peace looks like to the world that is that's temporary, but the everlasting peace that will penetrate your soul will only come from God. It'll only come from God. All the other gods, Buddha, Muhammad, Allah, <clears throat> they're all dead. They're all dead. Whoever lived and walked on this earth and people made them gods, their God, they are all dead. But the one thing that we can count on is that Jesus is alive. Archaeologists are still trying to find his remains. They can't find them over 2,000 years ago because he is alive. And the fact that he has conquered death, hell, and the grave, the fact that he has overcome the world, he can overcome your situation. He can overcome your problem. He can overcome your depression. He can overcome your anxiety. He can overcome your questioning. He can overcome your doubt if you let him. Father God, we thank you. We praise you, God. We praise you for being God, the one true and only God. We honor you for who you are in all of your glory, for being sovereign, for being the shepherd, God, for being our champion, Lord God. We pray right now for faith that is weak, for faith that has been tested and questioned God I pray that you would encourage the heart of your son and your daughter today allow this to be a testimony a sign of your goodness that you still are pursuing them regardless of what's going on in their lives God my prayer is that you soften their heart the Bible declares today that you hear my voice harden not your heart Somebody heard you speak today through this show. Somebody heard you speak today through this episode. Someone's heart was pricked and pulled on. God, I pray that you soften the hearts of your people. Allow them to receive you wholeheartedly. God, I pray that you perform a miracle like only you know how. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Brothers, sisters, um, be well, be blessed, be encouraged. God is not through with you yet. All right. Um, if you know someone that needs to hear this message, send it to him. Send in the YouTube link, the the link on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Let's get this message out and let's keep our brothers and sisters in the Lord encouraged. All right, y'all until next time, beautiful people be blessed.